Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now going to answer question number two from the June 2024 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P1 paper um, from Edexcel. And this question here is about indices. <clears throat> and it says that given that m equals 2 to the power of n, express each of the following in simplest form in terms of m. So basically what we have to do is break these down such that we're left with 2 to the power of n by itself. Okay, so we have to be left with 2 to the power of n by itself. Okay, so that's what we have to do here. So here we can use the law of indices kind of in reverse. All right, so for example, I know that a number to the power of a uh, to the power of p plus another number to the power of q, or to the, sorry, what am I talking about? A number to the power of p times the same number to the power of q will give you that same number to the power of the sum of those two. Okay, so from the laws of indices, you have two numbers with the same base, okay, and being multiplied together, you add their powers. So if we think about this in reverse, I can rewrite this as 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of 3. Okay, because if I was to go this way, they'll become 2 to the power of n plus 3. So it's kind of thinking about that law in, in reverse order. And we know that 2 to the power of n is equal to m. So I can replace this with m. So I have m times, and we know 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So in its simplest form, this would be 8 times m. So this is what 2 to the power of n plus 3 is in terms of m, if m is equal to 2 to the power of n. So similarly, we have to do a you know a very similar kind of thing here. So we've got to think of the number 16. And can we express it as 2 to the power of something? Can I express 16 as 2 to the power of something? Well, yes, I can. 16 is 2 to the power of 4. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is going to be 4. Uh, it's going to be 16, sorry. So that's 2 times 2 is 4, and another 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So we can rewrite this as 16 as 2 to the power of 4 to the power of 3n. Now we have this, which if we multiply um, these two together, okay, if you multiply these two together, um, that's how you work that, work that. We know the rule that a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m times n. Okay, if you raise up something to index form to another power, you multiply the powers together. So I can multiply these two powers together, and I can end up with 2 to the power of 12n. But what I want to have is 2 to the power of n. So I can kind of modify this a little bit. I can say this is the same as 2 to the power of n to the power of 12. Right, because multiplying these together will give you the same thing as that. And remember, we want to be left with something in this form. In this case, we got it straight away. In this case, we've got it now. And whatever is now in that form can be replaced by m. So this is going to be m to the power of 12. And there we have the answer to this question number two, a what part one, a and b. Okay, now... What you should um, realize, or, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put a card that will appear at this time during the video, okay, um, up here. This card will appear about now, and it will have basically um, a video where I go into depth in the rules of indices. So I go, I go into depth and it can tell you where some of these rules actually come from. Right, that's something which I um, you know, call back to basis, uh, back to basics of indices. So you'll see the card which should be appearing in this region should be there right now. Click on that, and if you're having problems with these indices concepts, you can watch that, and hopefully that will clear up your um, misconceptions. Okay, so that's question part A or part one, A and B. Now we're going to do part two. Okay, so now for part two, it says, um, and we got to Solve this equation, okay? Um, x root three minus three equals x plus root three. Give me your answer in the form p plus q, uh, q um, root three. Okay, so this is more to do with thirds. So I'll also include this in my playlist for thirds. Although thirds and indices are kind of like very much related. So I'll carry on with this in the same video. So one of the things it mentions, in this question you must show all stages of your working. Solutions relying on calculated technology are not acceptable. So if you just, plug this into your equation equation mode of your calculator, or once you've got your value of x and you have to rationalize it and put it in this form, if you don't show how you rationalize it, 
you will not gain the marks for this question. So the first thing is we have to solve this equation. So you have x times root 3 minus 3 equals x plus root 3. And what you've got to understand is that root 3 is just a number. It's just a number but written in its exact third form, right? So this question could be, for example, um, something like, say, 5x minus 3 equals x plus 3. It could be like that. This number here, or x plus 5, sorry. Right, same same number. So this this 5 and this 5 it could have been instead of the root 3s, for example. So the way that you go about solving this simple equation, which we should know from like grade 7, grade 6, whatever, um, maybe grade 7, grade 6, grade 7, uh, the same way that we go about solving the simple equation is the same way that we solve this, but we have to give our answers in exact form. So there's no, no, no good for us to put these in decimal form and then answer and give the answer in decimals. No, we want it in the exact form, p plus q root 3. So what we're going to do is, if we think about what we have to do in this case, we have to gather the x's together on one side of the equation. So the same thing we're going to do here. So what I would do here is I would subtract x from both sides. So I have x root 3. If I subtract x from this side, I'm going to get minus x. And I'll add 3 to both sides. So in this, this side, I'll have root 3 plus 3. Okay, so I've subtracted x from both sides and added 3 to both sides. When I, when I, when I, sub, when I added 3 to both sides, the 3 minus 3 is gone from here and it appeared here. When I subtracted x from both sides, the x disappeared from here and ended up here because you subtracted it. So, you know, I prefer that way of thinking than moving things to the other side. I don't like that terminology, um, as you might have realized already. So now what I can do is I can um, see here that I have... Like what I would have done here, I would have said 5x minus x equals 5 plus 3. And then I would have simplified this. 5x minus x is 4x, 5 plus 3 is 8, and then I would have continued to solve. Now here, I can't do the same thing as I've done there, all right? Because this is an exact form, all right? So what I can do instead of that is I can say, let's take x as a common factor of these two terms. So I have root 3 minus 1. So I've got root 3 minus 1x instead of 4x, okay, in exact form. And this is root 3 plus 3. Okay, and now I can divide both sides by root 3 minus 1. Okay, just like here, I would divide both sides by 4. So I have x equals 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by root 3 minus 1. So I have root 3 plus 3 divided by root 3 minus 1. Okay, so we're almost there now. We've actually found the value of x. Now we have to... Um, rewrite it in this form and that is done by rationalizing the denominator so i'm going to get rid of this now this is just a way for you to think um you know what we're doing here and what we're doing here is exactly the same thing it's not anything any more complicated the only reason it looks more complicated is because you have these third form um, coefficients of x so you have to just use factorizing to to deal with it at that stage okay so now we can rationalize the denominator now how do we rationalize the denominator something in third form well we multiply the denominator by the thing that causes it to become rational that gets rid of the root uh, term and we can do that by thinking of the difference of squares okay because if i multiply this by root 3 plus 1 what's going to happen is these two multiply together and the root 3 times root 3 becomes 3 the root is gone because it's like squaring root 3. Then you have root 3 times 1, and then you have minus 1 times root 3. Well, they're the same thing, but with opposite signs. So when you add them together, they disappear, which is our objective. And then, of course, minus 1 times 1 is going to give you uh, minus 1. So the, the root, the third form will be gone from the denominator. But because we have to have the same value, this, this fraction has to be the same value, I must also multiply it by the numerator by the same thing that I multiplied the denominator by. So whatever I multiply this by, I have to multiply the numerator by the same thing. So I always multiply the denominator by the conjugate, the thing which has the same numbers but the opposite sign in between them. So here, the numerator will now become root 3 times root 3, which is 3. Root 3 times 1, which is root 3. Then you have root 3 times, uh, uh, sorry, 3 times root 3, which is plus 3 root 3. And you have 3 times 1, which is plus 3 over... And as I mentioned before, the middle term will disappear. You end up with basically root 3 times three, root 3, which is just 3, and you'll have minus 1. It's basically the square of this minus the square of that you'll end up with. When you multiply the, the conjugate, the middle term will disappear. Okay, so now let's simplify this. So you can say x is equal to, that's 3 plus 3, which is 6. And that's 3 root 3 plus root 3, which is plus 4 
root 3 all over 3 minus 1, which is 2. We can take out a common factor of 2 from here. So you have 3 plus 2 root 3 over 2. The 2s cancel out. And we're left with the final answer, 3 plus 2 root 3. Now, with your P1 exam, okay, you can take a calculator into the exam. And you can, if you want to, check your answer, okay, by doing the following. So if you want to check that your rationalizing is correct, you can go to this stage over here and just put this in your calculator just to make sure. Just say root 3 and plus 3 over root 3 and minus 1. And you end up with 3 plus 2 root 3. So we know from here to here is correct. And if you want to check that your whole answer is correct, you could use the equation button or you could just simply put, uh, you know, this instead, instead of that. So you can put, for example, um, root 3 times and put the x value in there. The x value is 3 plus 2 root 3. 3 plus, sorry, 3 root 3 plus 2 root 3, sorry. 3 plus 2 root 3, and then um, minus, so that's that minus 3. Let's see what that equals. That's 3 plus 3 root 3, okay? And um, so that's what this gives you. And you put x in here, will you get the same thing? Yes, you will. If you put 3 plus 2 root 3 plus, or 3 plus, so what was this? 3 plus root 3 root 3 plus another root 3, that's going to be 3 plus uh, 4 root 3. Yeah, 3 plus 2 root 3, you have 3 plus 2 root 3 plus root 3, that gives us 3 plus 3 root 3, and this also gave us 3 plus 3 root 3 when we put x is this value in here, so therefore we get the same exact answer. Okay, so it's just checking your answer. So when I put 3 plus 2 root 3 in here, I got this, when I put 3 plus 2 root 3 in here, I also get the same thing. So this value of x satisfies the equation. So if you wanted to make a quick check or if you finish the paper early and you want to just be sure that you've got the right answers, then it's a good idea to make little checks like that if you want to, to make sure that you've done the right thing. So that concludes this um, paper. Okay, I'm going to, uh, sorry, this question, question number two. Um, as I said, I'm going to, you, you would have seen the card uh, in, during the video. I'll also try to put a link in the description to the video back to basics for indices. So you can click on that if you want to, um, you know, revise this topic, which a lot of people have misconceptions about. It'll also help with concepts in question number one as well. Um, anyway, um, you know, that concludes this question. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist on the top of the screen. Um, other questions from the topic of indices and SIRDs can be found in the um, playlist on the bottom of the screen here, on the bottom right. Um, I'll also put a playlist here. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link to the same video that I mentioned about indices and the basics of indices. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.